how you sing lots of really challenging songs、mm-hmm. and are able to sing them all the way through and、yep. really well,、yep. and you don't get tired. Right. I worked like in my bones at the end. At the end of the day, I take on my heart and pay all of my own. I need to stand to the rain till the tears run down from my eyes. Lord, so nice. If we want to go even deeper with you, particularly on these topics, right? What should we do?、Uh, often starts with a vocal, a good vocal warm up, which you can get.、Uh, it's called Mark Martel's vocal warm up. So that your voice doesn't bite the dust, <laughs> and you can join that free、time. course by clicking the link below. Okay, so how do you last a long time singing? It's so important for me to be in shape to prepare myself for the need for sudden bursts of energy. Like sometimes I go for a run, and I'll do like a run walk thing, like where I, I walk for a minute and then I'll sprint for a minute because that is. Essentially, what it's like to be on stage. You're not going hard the whole time. You you do a slow song and then you do a fast song, and you need to be able to have those momentary bursts of energy to m- meet the song where it takes you. What about in the actual performance? In in how you plan out your 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 lines, your songs,、right. your vocal energy. Yeah. Because that's a finite resource with yep, every song and every show. Absolutely, especially on stage. In the studio, it's a different different story. You can. You can punch in, you can cut, you can take breaks. <laughs> Absolutely, as long as you want day long breaks if、right. you want. But on stage, you really got to pick your your moments. And there's、mm. certain, you know, maybe a couple special wow moments where you know that people are going to be waiting for you to hit that one the way that they know it. You call it vocal budgeting. Vocal,、yeah. vocal budgeting. There you go. The prime example for me is actually Tony Bennett. I got to see Tony Bennett a couple years ago, and the guy is. Almost every song, the formula seems to be kind of keep it at like you know thirty to sixty percent for most of the song, and then right near the end, the last chorus, he goes for broke.、Uh-huh. But you don't often have that luxury when you're singing Freddie songs all the way through.、Mm-hmm. I mean, singing a Tony Bennett song,、right. he builds that in. Yeah. How how do you do、right. that in the midst of having to sing of a song that, is... that does have notes all the way through? Right. There are many recordings and videos floating around of Freddie Mercury changing. The melodies to his voice, and occasionally I'll dip into a lower on a note that is recorded originally higher, but still make that that note sing. Part of the character, exactly. And so you're you're building in moments throughout a song and even throughout a set、mm-hmm. where you can sort of catch your breath in the middle of the song, yeah, so that you can save up for that one money note or a couple money notes within the right. song, right? And so modifying that melody, maybe even. Uh, going up into head voice for a minute、yep. when you would in the recording normally like、yep. peg it in a massive chest voice thing. Yeah, you're making those decisions,、right. but surrounding it with with、uh, these big glorious moments, so the audience、yeah. really doesn't notice. Also, because you're so involved. That's right. In what you're doing, it's, yeah, it's part of the show. Exactly. The people are as much looking at what you're doing with your body than what. They're hearing from your voice, and I'll give you an, a specific example in the、yeah. song "Radio Gaga."、Uh, <clears throat> I believe it's the pre-chorus. You had your time. You had the power. You've yet to have your finest hour. Now I think that happens three times in the song, if I'm not mistaken, and I will usually give them that range of that passage at least once in the song. And most of the time, at least one of them, I'll do lower. I'll do, you had your time, you had the power, you've yet to have. So that gives me a good five to ten seconds of a vocal break instead of tiring myself out even more.、Mm-hmm. And if I'm feeling extra tired that day, I'll do two of them at the lower pitch. So you can, you can still have fun with a, a note that people are expecting to be higher, but make it interesting lower. So it really boils down to listening to your body in the moment,、yeah. and almost being your mind is one step ahead of your your physical voice.、Mm-hmm. So if you if you're feeling like okay, in the context of what's coming, you can you can really you know spend your energy on that note.、Yep. Maybe you will, but、yep. it's learning that balance, and、right. that's what gets you through these songs、right. and sets. And Personally, I don't like changing the melody. Like、yeah. I want to be as close to what people want to hear as possible. Because、uh-huh. I'm a P 
people pleaser, I guess. Um, and I, I remember the first time that Brian May came to one of our shows after the show, he said, he's like, wow, you, you really went for all those high notes, didn't you? I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't like to, I don't like to give people less than I yeah. think that they want from me, but it's nice to build in those little escape routes inside mm-hmm. of a song. So how often do you get done with a performance like that and go, maybe I pushed myself a little too much. I hope I can get through. I mean, does that happen? It happens. Yeah. Especially in a string of shows. Usually if it's one or two shows back to back, I I'm at the point now where I've done the music enough where I know that I can do it pretty much as hard as I want and still be okay. If I know I've got a break after the second show. And that's vocal training. That's yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You, you build up to that. Um, that's just, that just comes with a lot of singing. The very last thing that you have, this is something that you've been doing more recently, um, managing your airflow better. Like this, this is the thing that, that, uh, has helped you work up to that, Mm -hmm. uh, ability to really go what looks like all out, but it's not really all out. Right. Over the last year and a half, I've really figured out how to use compression to my, my advantage and not tiring myself so much. I'm straining less. I've got, I've still got grit and rasp in my voice. So you're balancing the air and in, with the use of compression, you actually appear and even sound more intense. That's the thing. But you're using, you're actually using less air. You're using more pressure. Yeah. I'm conserving my energy, but still managing to get a more pleasing, raspy, less kind of annoying sort of uh, yeah. rasp out. And it, it's actually in, in the work that we've done this week, your voice when you're when you're really doing that is actually quieter. So you can see right. it's like right. you're conserving, yet you also sound more uh, more pleasingly aggressive. Yeah. It's a really neat, really neat. Uh, give us yeah. an example, uh, even just like one note of how, you know, going all out on a note Versus yep. using subtle compression right. and then using a little bit more okay. compression to get that rasp. Somebody love. And I think before I learned how to do that that way, it was more like somebody love. Uh, now you, that's an exaggeration, but yeah. it was more towards that. But you can see the, you can see that you're like blowing yeah. more air, and you can see tension in your face. Yeah. Like you look more pained yeah. instead of free. Absolutely, you're still holding back air. You're still compressing on that first one yeah. really well. But it's it's a cleaner, higher placed right. compression. Mm-hmm. It's more pure sounding, and honestly, it it comes across as more energetic because of your countenance yeah. and because your voice sounds more agile. I look more relaxed and it's, it's small adjustments really. Like what I, those two things I gave you, that was the second one was definitely an exaggeration. I didn't mm-hmm. sing quite like that, Sure. but just figuring out how to just make a little adjustment in where I place my rasp has helped a huge ton That's for me. That's awesome. And we talk a lot more about that in your journey with yeah. that. Um, in our course that we've done together. If you want to go even deeper with Mark, click that link below. It all starts with how you warm up. Yeah. Join his free warm up course. What's it called again? Mark Martell's vocal warm up so that you your voice doesn't bite the dust. I almost got it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. We'll see you for more.